and hello and I'm back with another movie review. How is everybody doing? Huh? Doing great? Doing fine? While I have you here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and of course, hit the bell so you don't miss out on any movie reviews. Now, I said this in the last video because I told you, we're, this is what we're seeing next. This is a go-to uh, date night for my fiance and I, and it's going to the movies because we're big movie buffs, if you couldn't tell. At least by me. I mean, you haven't really met him, but, you know, it's fine. Um, And so, not only that, my fiance is a huge fan of Wes Anderson. Um, Wes Anderson's a director, in case you didn't know that. Um, he has been making movies for quite some time. Some of his more notable ones uh, would be The Royal Tenenbaums, uh, Life Aquatic with Steve Azuzu, um, Isle of Dogs, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, the list goes on. He's done... He's done a lot of movies. Um, and this movie that I'm going to be reviewed actually uh, premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in, this summer. And then um, then it was theatrically released about uh, two weeks ago. So, without further ado, this is The French Dispatch. Um, so according, so the synopsis according to IMDB is the French Dispatch is a love letter to journalist, journalists set in an outpost of an American newspaper in a fictional 20th century French city that brings to life a collection of stories published in the French Dispatch, the French Dispatch magazine. Here we go. Here we go. So basically... Basically, it's it's about the magazine, mainly about originally, not it's not based on a true story or anything. Although, um, I was just reading a little, a couple of things on it, and um, one of the things was that uh, Wes Anderson really loves the New Yorker. So if you know anything about the New Yorker. The kind of the same premise is happening here, but really what's happening is Bill Murray plays the editor in chief and he has to edit all these stories. Um, and basically, um, it's those stories come to life on film while he is also uh, kind of editing them and critiquing them near at the end of each story. So, um, the movie's broken down into four sections. One really small one where um, uh, where it's Owen Wilson playing a Owen Wilson is playing one of the journalists and he bikes everywhere. So like his little his little uh, article was about life, the life that he sees on the bike, you know, and how cars are evil. <laughs> I get it. Um, and then we move, and so then the second story is about an artist um, that was discovered while he was serving like a life sentence in prison um, and about how he was discovered and um, yeah, and a little bit just like about his life. It's the art piece of the magazine. Um, Benicio del Toro plays the artist and Adrian Brody is the art collector or art dealer, maybe art, it's art dealer. Um, so then the third story was, um, oh, it was about the revolution, not the French revolution, but a revolution. Um, that this woman was writing about the young people and that was Francis, Francis, oh, but what's her? Francis McDermott, it was the journalist, and she's basically following the life of Seferelli, who was played by 
Timothy Chalamet. This man is everywhere. Although, I'm going to say this. I think I like Tim Timothy Chalamet better in this movie than I did in, in Dune. Although, I'm not saying Dune is bad. Although, you need to go back and watch that video so you know what I said about it. I'm just saying, I really liked, I really liked Timothy's character in uh, this, in this movie. It was, it was good. I like, I enjoyed it. Um, so she's basically following this, like, little mini revolution that's happening in this small French city. Um, and then the final story is about, um, it's a food writer. He, um, played by Jeffrey Wright, he writes on, he writes food articles. And he writes about how, and his story is about how he went to have dinner at a police commission, at the police commissioner's house when, um, his, child gets kidnapped and then it goes into that whole like trying to get the kid back while still like trying to enjoy a meal <laughs> um so if all of that sounds really wacky well what you're hearing is correct because this is a Wes Anderson film one thing you need to know about Wes Anderson first of all I I what this is what I've been saying is that Wes Anderson's a bit of a he's a He's an acquired taste, okay? He's not making these big blockbuster movies. He's not really making... Inter I would almost say he doesn't necessarily make entertainment for the masses. I'm not saying that not, you know, like, his movies aren't good, because they are. It's just that there's such a, it's such a unique way of how he does, how he films and how he directs and all... And, what he does as a director is very not normal <laughs> to what we're used to, what the Americans are used to, um, in their cinema, you know? So he's an acquired taste. One of the other, one of my other love words I like to give Wes Anderson is that he's quirky. Quirky, like you look up in the dictionary, I'm telling you, Wes Anderson's face is there under quirky, because he is. Um, his humor is really quirky. It's not necessarily, like, one-liners here and there, but it's just kind of, they're, like, sometimes they are, like, they're, like, I don't want to say hidden one-liners, but they're not meant to be, like, bam, not one-liners. They're just kind of, like, they come up randomly, and you're, like, oh, okay, that was a good one, Wes. I see you. I see you. Um, so he's got a quirky sense of humor, um, and then on top of that, the other thing Wes Anderson does is that he really loves that his scenes to be what I call aesthetically pleasing. Like each, each scene, each cut, each scene, each just, he likes to have a still camera where it's just looking right at it and it's just the room, but the room is so is so artfully put together and the colors work and this there's like the way they have it set up is like it's visually pleasing to see like he will like it'll be like a screenshot you could take a screenshot of any Wes Anderson movie and it looks like a piece of art should be on your wall like that's the kind of vision he has for his movies so that's one thing you need to know going into this is that he he's an artsy fartsy kind of guy. He loves his artsies and he loves his fartsies. If you don't mind. I'm just kidding. There was no fart jokes in this. Um that would be too much. Um so out of his out of his uh portfolio of movies that he has done this is one of the more weirder ones. Um, like, like I said, he, he himself is a quirky guy. Um, but I'm sorry, I'm looking up his filmography right now. Bottle Rocket Rushmore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Grand, okay, it was Grand Budapest. I'm like over here like, was that correct? It was correct. Um, where was I going with that? Out of the films that he has done, this is one of the more weirder ones. And it's also one that's done a little bit differently than all the others. Because there is no coherent, 
one story happening. It's a multitude of stories, not all happening at once, but happening one at a time because he's basically like, so he, like I said, Bill Murray plays the editor in chief and he's like, we need to, he's like, he's got to edit down everybody's story. And so it goes to that story and he goes through it. And at the end, near the end of the story, it's cut to where, you know, Bill Murray comes into that edit, into that writer's room and like, hey, can we cut this? Can we, can you say it differently? You know? So like, there's kind of like that little coherent story happening, but like, it is literally like four individually different, four individual stories in one movie. So, which is very different from what he's done before, because I believe most of the movies he's I'm looking at the list here and all the other movies he's ever done has been like one story, but he does intentionally do like act one, act two, act three type of things. He for sure did then Royal Tenenbaums. Um, he really likes doing chapters and acts and stuff like that, like breaking the story up so you know kind of where you're at, which also means that he films, he makes movies like someone would a book. Is really like that's, he's like, He's a, <laughs> when I say he's like a writer, he's like a literary writer. Like he writes his movies and he writes these movies like as if they're books. And then he films them like it's a book coming to life. And this is probably like the best one he's done of that because it's an actual, not an actual, but it's a, he's taking the idea of like the New Yorker, you know, um, a magazine like that and actually bringing to life some of the stories that are in there so yeah I don't know like it was it was interesting there were like funny moments there were like some weird moments um because again it's an acquired taste so if you don't really know what's happening it's got it you know it took a left turn somewhere that you weren't you weren't sure about you're like is that really what really limit is that really where you wanted to go Wes and the answer is yes, that's really where he wanted to go with that. Um, out of the four stories, I mean, they're all good. I mean, they all have like their, again, all their unique quirkiness that's in each of them. Um, yeah, I don't know. This was, you know, I was calling Dune a sin, a sin, a sin, a sin, a sin, a sin, a I was calling Dune a cinematic experience because it kind of engulfed you in with the loud noises and stuff like that. The, the French Dispatch is cinematic art at its best. Like, there's a reason this is like, like, this is as indie as you can get, okay? There's a reason why Wes Anderson is studied in in higher education because he's doing something that nobody else is doing. That's just point blank. That's what's happening here. Um, so let's get down to the rating system, huh? The French Dispatch. When I have to compare it to some of his other movies, it was not, I don't think it was nearly as good as some of them. So I'm going to give, uh, the French Dispatch four stars. Um, there was no, there's, I don't have necessarily a, re, like, I just, I don't feel like it's a five-star movie in comparison to some of his other movies, like I said, like, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Rushmore, Royal Tannenbaums, uh, Isle of Dogs, like, he's just had so many other movies that were a little bit better than The French Dispatch, but I really appreciate what he's doing. And I appreciate that he's bringing art back into the cinema because that, because it can't always just be explosions constantly and bad one-liners and just buff dudes jumping out of cars. It can't be that all the time. You have to have, gotta have something in, you gotta have something different. And that's what Ed Wes Anderson does every time he comes to the theater. So I always appreciate that. So you heard it here first, folks. Whew, am I out of breath? Um, the French Dispatch, four stars. Again, directed by Wes Anderson. Um, and it has many stars that I'm not even going to get into. But it's a it's an all-star cast, if you want to believe me or not. So, it is in 
there it is in some theaters but not all theaters um so go and see it in theaters now uh it might not be in your theater anymore but i'm sure it'll come to streaming soon so that was the french dispatch and i'll see you guys next time